<laughs> After the ship was brought up to scratch, Captain Bayes and her crew were excited to leave Turtle Island for another random journey. Well, indeed not all crew members were happy about the departure. Especially Bernoulli despaired at the thought of being on the ocean once again for weeks, months or even years. Ah, uh, Ernesto. I cannot stand this terrific random journey anymore. Why can't we sail with a clear destination? Look at this moronic compass. It is the origin of my random fate. Why can't I set this needle to point only in one direction? Ah, uh, Vanilla, you should have known when hiring that you will go on a random journey with uncertain return. This time we have taken more citrus fruits on board than ever. Yes, but in the beginning, when twisting twice, we had a free day. We lost that concept of recreation completely. Uh, oh, no! Now I broke the needle! Oh! Captain Bayes will be so angry with me. Ah, Benoli, here you are. What are you doing with the random compass? He broke it, he broke it, he broke it. Yes, this was an accident. But, but I am trying to figure out how we can still use it for our random purpose. Hmm, just throw the needle on the disc. The needle will still show a direction. Yes, yes. I'll try. Oh, I missed the disc. A second try? I got east. It seems to work. No, isn't this north? Ah, it's pointing rather north, but the tip is in the east section. I suggest we don't count those throws where the needle is outside the inner circle with half the radius of the large disc. Blablas, this is ingenious. This shall define a free day! Brilliant idea! Hmm... What do you think is the probability for a free day when randomly throwing the needle on the disc? Bernoulli and Laplace started to puzzle over this problem and even Pascal joined the discussion. Finally, they came up with three different solutions and addressed Captain Bayes to find out which is the correct answer. So without loss of generality, I choose a point on the circle as a starting point of the needle, which I call now a line. And then I have to randomly find another point on the circle, which is the end point of the line. With these equilateral triangle, I see clearly that I hit the inner circle only in a third of all possible end point choices. So the probability to have a free day should be two thirds. Strange. This sounds logical to me but I came up with a different solution. So I define a random line by the middle point of its secant in the large circle. So just choose a random point and then draw the line such that the distances to the large circle are the same in both directions. Since a day off corresponds to a midpoint outside the inner circle, the probability for such a free day is equal to the proportion of the areas of the inner circle and the outer circular ring, which is three-fourths. That's even better than my solution. I think I will agree with you, Pascal. Haha! This is really paradoxical. I also got a different solution, which might not make you happy, Benoli. So. I assume all directions to be indifferent. Then I characterize a random line by the radial distance from the line to the center. The values for the distance can be between 0 and 1 times the large radius. When assuming all distances to be equally probable, I end up with a probability of 1 half for having a free day. My dear crew, what a fantastic paradox! It reminds me of my old friend Bertrand who formulated the very same problem. I remember a letter in which Edwin Jane suggested the following. The questions boil down to find the correct needle or line distribution on that disc. It should not matter what we look at on the disc. So in other words, the distribution should be invariant. While Captain Bayes went into her cabin to explore the invariance principle, Pascal spotted a fisher boat with broken masts. 
After rescuing the exhausted Fisher, she captured the crew with her story. I was up to find the mysterious origin of flashes coming from across the ocean, which I spotted on my beach over several weeks. There must be a new lighthouse or something similar. So, I took my boat to find the source of the light, but on my way, a giant wave hit me. I lost the paddle, the mast broke, and the boat was unable to maneuver. I fought back to the waves, and I think I would have prevailed. But then, you helped me out. Wow, Lara! What an exciting story! So let's assume there are flashes from a rotating light source. Are you wondering how to determine its position just from the sightings at your beach? Exactly. I even have a map of the positions and frequencies of the observation of the flashes. You can have a look at it. That sounds like a problem of my taste. Let's set sails to bring you back to your beach. We will try to solve this problem on the way. Captain Base, you are so kind. I am really curious how you will predict the positions just from these observations. Well, I think it might be possible to derive a probability distribution for the position and distance of the unknown lighthouse. Laplace, let's try together. After a day, they reached Lyra's beach. Thankful for her rescue, Lyra invited the whole crew to be their guests and to remain longer on the island. She greatly appreciated the problem-solving skills of the crew, and in fact, Lyra had another riddle to solve. You know, in my spare time, I walk up and down the long beach, counting the gifts the sea washes on daily. I'm so angry with those guys who think the ocean is their trash can. I keep track of how many bottles and boards I find daily. Oh, I hate those people too. Especially those bottle posters. You feel me, sister. I even started reading a bottle conversation between Jeffrey and Benford. It seems they use 10 bottles for every message. Captain, sometimes I am so bored that I even make a statistic about my statistic about the leading digits of my weekly countings. The funny thing is, no matter what I count, shells, bottles, colored stones, the leading digits all behave the same. Do you have experience with such a phenomenon? I would have guessed, from the principle of indifference, that all digits were equally probable. Maybe it's a sign you did a bad counting? Lyra, I believe your numbers. I guess the numbers you counted span several magnitudes. Since all show the same pattern, there must be a law. Oh, that's exciting! Yeah, isn't that strange? I also do measurements on the size and the weight of the object I found. And no matter in what units I measure, meter or inch or feet, I always get the same pattern. No way! Well, let's think the other way around. Bernoulli. If you think that all numbers should be equally probable, in what range do you expect the number of daily found muscles to be? We could also count in pairs of muscles or in dozens or hundreds. Since the obtained numbers span several magnitudes, I think any answer to this problem should consider scale invariance. But let's think about that more thoroughly. Can you help Captain Bice and her crew to shed light on the race paradox with the compass lines and help Lyra with her observations? <coughs> How can one solve the paradox of the ratio of three days given the new method to dial the compass? How to determine the probability distribution of the position and distance of the unknown lighthouse? How can one explain the observed patterns for leading ditches in counting tables and measurement lists. Watch the next video to gain more insight into continuous variables and learn about scale invariance, Benford's law and Jeffrey's prior.